The headlines, Sinclair warns of more tough measures. The NCC workers' hearing begins. The British PM rejects reparations call, and the Windies will definitely miss the Champions Trophy. Welcome to Nation News for Wednesday, September the 30th, 2015. Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has given his strongest signal yet that Barbadians will have to endure tough fiscal measures for some time to come. He told reporters that the economy is not yet past the worst, even after more than five years of stagnation. Government, he said, has no intention of easing up on economic reform until the country is out of the woods. Mr. Sinclair, who will mark five years as Finance Minister on Sunday, was speaking at a handover ceremony for about $17 million, the European Union's latest contribution to this country's human resource development program. EU Ambassador Mikhail Balford warned that the absence of strong growth in the medium term can cause significant financial distress for Barbados. He said it is therefore critical that government maintains the stability of the economy. The Employment Rights Tribunal has held its first public hearing into the retrenchment of scores of National Conservation Commission workers last year. It took place before a packed house at the Sandiford Centre, including senior officials of the Barbados Workers' Union and the National Union of Public Workers. General worker Cutie Lynch was the only witness to take the stand since the other main witness, Dennis Clark, had asked for leave to attend a funeral. He will testify on Thursday. Attorney Pat Cheltenham, representing the workers, revealed that while there were originally 96 claimants before the tribunal, that number has fallen to at least 42. Close to 200 workers actually lost their jobs at the NCC, but some opted to take the severance packages on offer. Some independent taxi drivers are upset over the new queuing system at the Bridgetown port. They told Nation News that previously, co-op and independent taxis into the port using separate lines. But now there's only one line and they fear that they will get less business. The drivers say the order from management now has many of them parking as far as the Bridgetown Fisheries Complex waiting for their number to be called. Driver Curtis Gittins spoke to Nation News. There's a one-line system and it meant no farm today. So it means now the less and less vehicles inside the port try to govern the drivers and what's not. It used to be about 40 somebody vehicles in the part of the morning and now it's only about 18. So they got all the drivers outside and we try now to get back, you see the two-line the two system. That's what's going on here. So what the two-line system allowed you to do before? We're more, we're more we're work a little bit faster now, we're outside here now. We've got to be outside here now until we number call now. The Crane Hotel's installation of a floating barrier to divert seaweed from the resort's beach will have to enter a second day because of choppy seas. The setting up of a boom, something similar to what they use for marine oil spills, was called off at about half past two after a team of coast guards and employees of the resort had toiled for more than six and a half hours. A portion of the beam had already been installed by the time the rough seas forced the delay. Carol Williams was on hand. Choppy seas caused difficulties for the 25 Coast Guard crew and some employees of the Crane Residential Resort, who started at around 8 this morning, installing the long-awaited seaweed boom just off the Crane Beach in St. Philip. Owner and Managing Director Paul Doyle, who has complained about the horrendous amount of seaweed washing up on the beach, is confident that a device which measures 1,100 feet will work. For the last three or four years, we've been getting more and more seaweed every year. Uh, this year was uh, horrendous. Uh, we've had to have people on the beach every day, the machine on the beach every day. And it, so, um, and you know, I think the tourists still want to see beautiful white sand and lovely beaches. So we're, we've put this in as a way of keeping the seaweed off the beach so we don't have to clean it up every day. And um, we're very optimistic that it'll work very well. Um, so it's going in with the help of uh, the Coast Guard. Um, we're putting it in today. 
It was new ground for the Barbados Coast Guard, but they were not deterred. The liaison officer for the operation said they had to get the job done. Initially, we had practiced on a smaller, a smaller scale boom. Um, the design is, is, is slightly different, but we have overcome that by, by communicating with the manufacturers about the, the setup, etc. Right now, the surf is the greatest um, problem. We have deployed about four swimmers. Um, they're getting some challenges of making the connections to the, to the systems, but we are, we are overcoming that in time. The operation involving the seaweed boom cost in the region of 30,000 to 100,000 US dollars. Kara Williams reporting for Nation News. Five days after the shooting death of 63-year-old businessman Stanley Michelini, police are appealing for help from the public. They are asking for information from anyone who may have been traveling along Highway 2A at its junction with Buck St. Thomas between 1 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. last Friday and who may have seen two suspicious men, uh, suspicious vehicles, or a man running bareback in the direction of Highway 2A. Witnesses are asked to call 211 for the Crime Stoppers Anonymous hotline at 1-800-8477, 1-800-8477 or the nearest police station. Great news, two men are the latest to reach the age of 100. Congratulations to Joshua Stanley, a resident of the Geriatric Hospital and Emerson Best who marked his entry to the elite group of centenarians at Westmoreland St. James. Both men received visits on the big day, Tuesday, from Governor General Sir Elliot Belgrave and family and friends. The British Prime Minister David Cameron has ruled out making reparations for Britain's role in the historic slave trade and urged Caribbean countries to move on. In a speech to the Jamaican Parliament, Mr. Cameron acknowledged that the wounds of slavery run very deep, but he said Britain's role in wiping slavery off the face of our planet should be remembered. In an open letter to Mr. Cameron before he arrived, Sir Hilary Beckles, chairman of CARICOM's Reparations Commission, had written that the UK must play its part in cleaning up what he called the monumental mess of empire. Mr. Cameron also met the Jamaican Prime Minister, who said she'd raised the issue of reparations. In sport, it's been confirmed that the West Indies will not be competing in cricket's Champions Trophy in England in 2017. The tournament is limited to the top eight countries in the world, and West Indies were ninth at the September 30th cutoff date. It's the first time West Indies have failed to qualify for any of the major ICC tournaments. And finally, a Florida woman clearly forgot that 9-11 was free emergencies when she called them to complain about being given less marijuana than she'd paid for, according to police in Fort Myers. The woman called demanding something be done about the sale after she paid $75 for the weed but came up short. When police arrived at her home, she was outside waiting to speak to them. She was arrested for misusing 9-11 and then another charge was added when they found a bag of weed in her car. As for the dealer, they did not have enough evidence to arrest him. For more news, log on to nationnews.com. That's our bulletin for today, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. 